Hey, my name is Sebastian, and in this episode, we go through the steps of a Sprint Zero. So we are getting familiar with XM Cloud, the site creation, and the solution. I will show you how to set up the dev environment and connect your code base running on your local rendering host with a preview endpoint of XM Cloud. Requirements have been set by the business analysts and now the product owner set up the backlog with user stories to define what needs to be achieved. This is also the time the development team gets ready to be able to implement and familiarize with the new technology stack. As XM Cloud is mainly focusing being a headless enterprise content and website management system, we have CM instance that can be managed through several UIs, but also through APIs and tools utilizing those. The content created by marketers will then be published to a geographically distributed delivery layer called Edge. Edge offers a GraphQL endpoint to query for content. This is where you connect your app to that lives on a rendering host. That might be Vercel, Netlify, AWS, Azure or any other vendor. In order to utilize the what you see is what you get editing experience in pages or experience editor, an internal rendering host or editing host is delivered with XM Cloud. This runs a node server and can host the node based application. If you are planning to run a .NET Core application, you can configure an external rendering host to be your editing host. To access XM Cloud, also the Sidecore Cloud portal is available to you. This lets you manage and access your different Sidecore apps. See more details here. When developing with XM Cloud, you can use the available build and deployment services. If you have more requirements than currently provided, you can also set up your own build and deployment pipeline using the XM Cloud CLI. The XM Cloud CLI allows you to manage your XM Cloud instance and deploy beside the UI. Of course, you can serialize content items that represent developer artifacts from your XM Cloud instance into your source code repository. Let's get started. In the Sidecore Cloud Portal, I am logging into my organization. From here, I am creating a new project using the XM Cloud Deploy app. A project is connected to a source code repository. Each project can have multiple environments, so a typical setup would be to have one source code repository for one brand or legal entity, and then have a dev environment, QA, staging, or pre-prod, and production. We start with the dev environment for now and create the other environments later down the road. You can see that there are already a few projects. The amount of projects you can create depends on the licensing model. So I create a new project and now I can choose whether I want to start from a starter template or my own existing repository. I'm starting from scratch as my previous MVC project does not work here. Currently, there is only the XM Cloud Foundation project available, which is based on a Next.js app. I can give my project a name, which will be displayed later on in the project list. I name it Headless SXA Tutorial Series. Now I can select the source code repository provider. Currently, there is only GitHub implemented. If you work with a different source code repository provider, you would have to use the CLI to set up your project and environment. You can create a new GitHub connection if not yet done. When doing so, make sure you grant general access and not just one repo. As XM Cloud will clone a repo into your GitHub account, it needs to have the according rights to do so. I'm selecting my account that has been previously connected. And I provide a repository name, Headless SXA Tutorial Series. Now the project is set up and the GitHub repo is created, I need to create an environment. I'll start with company dev environment. This is not marked as a productive environment and for now I trigger a deployment when changes are committed to my main branch. The deployment is started and I can see that the provisioning and build are running in parallel. The provisioning sets up all resources I need to run the XM Cloud instance. The build is building the software solution I clone to my personal repository. Once both steps are finished, the deployment of my code is started. At the moment the deployment is finished, I can start using my XM Cloud environment. The post actions are run in the background to warm up the application and build my indexes. 
Now I can log in and open my Axum Cloud Launchpad. I can see all my available tools, but before I talk about those, let me create my first site. On the Sites tab, I can create a new site. I can choose to create an empty site or the basic site that has already some content. It is recommended to use the empty site as a starting point. The basic site is more for a quick demo purpose and would require a cleanup when used for a client project. I'll start with the basic site anyway to have something visible, but switch later probably to an empty site. I'll name my site Company Dev. I can select one of the pre-configured languages. For now there's only English. I can also select an existing site identifier or create a new one. This is required when connecting CDP for embedded analytics and personalization. We will care about this later. Let's start the creation process of the site. Once my site is scaffolded in the background, I can access it using Axum Cloud Pages and start editing the content. In Pages, you can change the viewport to mobile or tablet. You can switch sites or languages. You can see the components that come out of the box and that you can use to build your pages. And you can see the bare content of the current page. In the Tools section, you have all Axum Cloud related apps available to manage your content. In Explorer, you can navigate your sites and pages. You can also create new from here. Let's now navigate to the GitHub account and download the repository. In my repositories overview, I find the newly created headless SXA tutorial series repo. From here, I can download the repository to my local file system using the GitHub CLI. So I copy the command and switch into Windows Terminal or any other command line interface. I navigate it to the folder where I want to download my sources to and run the command I just copied. I can open the newly created folder in Visual Studio Code. In here, I use the terminal as well. As per readme file, I need to run the init script that was delivered with my source code repository passing the path to my license file and the admin password of my Axum Cloud instance, which is B. Why should that change with Axum Cloud? For sure, you can use any password and you have to use a secure password when dealing with your client projects. The init script initializes the end file with everything necessary. Let's now set up our app to connect to the Axum Cloud instance so we can start implementing. Therefore, a few things need to be configured up front to connect to the GraphQL endpoint. I navigate to the .end file of my app folder. As it is not recommended to modify this one, I copy it and name it .env.local. By default, the .env.local is ignored by Git. This way I do not submit local configuration to the source control. I can connect using the delivery endpoint of Edge or the preview endpoint of my CM instance. Any app showing content to the public must connect to the Edge delivery endpoint that is scaled and geographically distributed. Only published content will be available here. For development purposes, it is handy to connect to the preview endpoint as we do not need to care about publishing at this point, so created content is instantly available. Within the .env.local file, I need to set up the API key. The API key should be already existent in your Axum Cloud instance. In Content Editor, navigate to Sitecore System Settings Services API Keys. The item ID of your API key item is the key you want to use. To verify if I can connect correctly with the API key, I can open the GraphQL IDE connecting to the preview endpoint. This can be accessed using the domain of your Axum Cloud instance slash sidecore slash API slash graph slash edge slash IDE. I need to pass the API key as sc underscore API key in the HTTP headers. I run a simple query and 
the content shows up. I can also see the endpoint URL in the IDE. Let's get back to the .env.local file. I'll paste the API key and the GraphQL endpoint URL of the preview endpoint. Last but not least, we need to provide the JSS app name, which needs to contain the name of the site. In my case, I also enable the debugging to see more details in the log output. Further down in the .env.local file, I find the CDP-related environment variables. As the starter kit also supports embedded personalization, I have to provide the next public CDP target URL, the next public CDP client key, and the next public CDP point of sale variables. To get those values, I first care about the point of sale. In XM Cloud, I navigate to the settings and create a new site identifier. I'll give it a name. Please note, blanks are not allowed, same as some special characters. I can select the language and provide some other details. This will be used in CDP to identify the site analytics data. I save the data. Now I want to assign the site identifier to my actual site. Therefore, I navigate to the site and click on the action button to open the settings. In here, I can assign the site identifiers. I click on the three dots at the end of the line. I could have created the site identifier also from here by clicking the create button. So I select the identifier I just created from the list and save the changes. I can see the mapping of site and site identifier when going to content editor and navigating to the site grouping item. The values are stored in the point of sales field. Back to the settings of my site, I can navigate to the developer settings where I can find a lot of data about my site and my environment. From here I can copy the tenant URL to my target URL environment variable, I can copy the client ID. and the point of sale I just created. Now I want to start the app. So in the terminal, I navigate to the rendering app folder. I run npm install command to install all required npm packages. This takes a while, but luckily this is a one-time activity. Now I can start the application. I usually do that in a separate terminal window as it will remain blocked for the running app by logging all information. So I navigate here as well to my rendering app folder and run npm run start colon connected. By the way, when running the node server for the first time, it takes a bit longer. Next time it will be up in about two or three seconds. Once the node server is up, I can call the app in my browser on localhost port 3000. To verify I'm connected against the preview endpoint, I want to change content. I open the home page in pages and add company dev to the headline. Save it. After reloading the page, I can see the changes appearing in my local app. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.